The American flag was burned in Tehran again today. In a dozen other places, the stars and stripes were trampled underfoot. What is happening to the greatest nation on earth? Has the moral leader of the West become a weak, pitiful giant? And if it has, has it happened to the people of this nation? Is it true, have Americans lost their fight? Why do we allow third-rate dictators around the globe to pick on Americans and go without punishment? And why, after Americans have stood up to support so many others in distress, does it seem that no one wants to stand up for America? The men and women who served in the wars today can't even afford to live decently in retirement. It was American Marshall Plan know-how that saved Western Europe from communist domination. It is in these countries today that American servicemen can barely make ends meet because their dollars are worth so little. America has never turned away refugees seeking freedom and security. Yet, when America looks around for help, grinning oil sheiks say only, pay more. Even the Soviet Union, boasting, we will bury you, is allowed to buy American wheat because its crops have failed. When Americans were begged over and over to save someone in some distant place from disaster, you never asked, what are their politics? How can they repay our help? Americans only wanted to know how much is needed and can we send it faster? We see Americans pleading with Cambodians to allow us to save their own people. The Reds worry about political implications. Americans worry about dying children. The boat people, the Vietnam War orphans, Cubans fleeing Castro's dictatorship, Hungarians escaping Soviet tanks, the millions uprooted by the Holocaust. These and countless others have always found a safe haven in the U.S. of A. America has drawn its strength from the influx of new blood, but there is growing evidence that this strength is dwindling. Could your critics and enemies be taking part from what they see here? What do petroleum potentates think when they see Americans drawing guns on each other to be first in line for gasoline? What do the Kremlin leaders think when they see American judges allowing pornographers to flourish while telling school children they can't say a silent prayer before class? What do even your friends think when they see Americans waving communist banners and donning armbands to march in the uniform of this nation's enemies? If some radicals think they can burn your flag and kill your diplomats and get away with it, maybe part of the reason is what they believe you have shown them. They are wrong. The penny anti hitler impersonators, the arrogant petrodollar potentates, the tyrannical ayatollahs don't believe that you can stand up, America. They don't think Americans have the fortitude to tell them, keep your lies, stop your ultimatums, and to hell with your oil. They don't believe the spoiled, luxury-loving Americans can endure the hardship they threaten. They figure America has exchanged its principles for their petroleum. They see American compassion as weakness and American restraint as fear. Are they right or are you willing to stand up, America? Are you willing to stand up and say, we've had it with those who accept our food, our technical help, our money, and then repay kindness with insult, injury, and intimidation? Are you ready to let them know enough is enough? We are fed up? Then stand proud and say, now we are determined. Now we are united. We are America. Are you ready to tell the world if they aren't willing to prove they're your friend, then they'll have to accept the consequences? You've done it before, and you can do it again. It's time, it's time for Americans to stand up. Stand up for what America stands for.